Welcome to Aberdeen, Scotland. As the chilly winds blow through the Granite City this morning here on the coast, we prepare for the most exciting part of the week at Curl Aberdeen. We'll take you inside this lovely venue. We find teams competing in the World Mixed Doubles Curling Championship 2021. And we will have playoff games, knockout games, win or go home. Canada will play Switzerland in one of two qualification games. The winner will be through to the semi-finals. For Team Canada, looking for the, the first ever gold medal in this discipline, Brad Gushu playing alongside Kerry Anerson. They will take on Switzerland with seven titles in this uh, mixed doubles. Martin Rios play with Jenny Perry. We take a look at uh, the teams and how they stacked up through group play. We see the six teams they, uh, with the queue they've qualified. They're all going to be in the playoff stages this weekend. We take a look at the bottom. We'll see Spain and Estonia, the two teams relegated to uh, the qualification event and will have to qualify to play in this event next season. Also, taking a look at the playoff bracket, we will now see how this works. There's two qualification uh, games, and the winner of those two qualification games will then go ahead and play either Sweden or Scotland, as they had a direct bye to the semi-final by winning the respected groups. And just taking a look at the other games to be played, of course it is Norway to play Italy in another other qualification game, as well as we have Hungary playing Finland and Japan playing Korea. Those two games will be for relegation. The loser of those two games will as well have to qualify for next season. And the rules of play, two players, one male, one female, one pre-position stone per team per end. The teams will play five stones each end. And the game is, of course, again, scheduled for eight ends of play, 22 minutes of thinking time awarded the teams at the start of the game. We'll see the players play either stones one and five or the middle three stones. They are allowed to switch positions between the ends, but there are no takeouts until the fourth played stone. One power play also to be utilized by the teams at some point during the game. That is up to them when they choose to use it. So taking you to the ice level now, I'll introduce myself, Sander Olvog, and my expert, curling expert, curling extraordinaire, Rona Howie. Good morning. Good morning, Xander. Well, we're uh, already on Saturday, Rona. It's uh, gone quick. It has. Nine round robin games for each of these teams. They've got that Olympic qualification spot. Now it's all about medals. Dear, I say the week's gone as quick as a mixed doubles game does itself. Jenny Perry will start. This will be over before you know it. And it certainly does feel that way as a player playing in these big games. It's not a 100 meter dash exactly, but a couple of hours can go by very, very fast in a game like this. Jenny Perry will come up just a foot heavy there and slip off the back red. So that's the pre-position stone on the back forefoot. And we have that yellow center guard. That will be the setup for every end, except the power play ends. We see Kerry Anerson playing stones one and five for Canada. So very important to control the front, there. the top of that red forefoot circle. Line's really good. Brad Gushu on the sweep, Line's not good, easy. something easy he's too used to. He certainly got used to it this week, though. Kerry's been making him work hard. Ah, really nicely played there. It's all about angles, setting up the head, giving yourself the chance for later on. Here is Martin Rios, along with Jenny Perry, picking up the title in 2017. That was in Lethbridge in Canada. Of course, they beat Canada in the final. Scored a four in the last end. They were down three. 
perhaps the most uh, dramatic final we've had in the discipline. And it's a good start for Rios, gets to the face of that redstone. Yeah, Canada still lie. Really good stone positioning from Switzerland. Just can't tap it. So we will see Kerry Anderson actually sweep most of the stones for Brad Gushu. He's obviously yep. most comfortable having his uh, two sweepers when he skips his men's team so maybe just that having to jump up and sweep your own stone doesn't quite fit Brad Gushu as much as uh, some other players yeah, and it also means you get to watch a true line of your stone rather than jumping up to judge the sweeping that's true of course Gushu very good at reading the ice and Seeing the curl, valuable information. I do believe Brad is more than fit enough to, to sweep, though. Uh, his teammate Mark Nichols is a personal trainer. And if I'm not mistaken, I think they co own a gym in St. John's. I don't think you're, I don't think you'll be allowed to be too lazy if you have a personal trainer on your team. Martin Rios has been playing uh, mixed doubles for many years. He actually won another World Championship title back in 2012 with Nadine Lehmann. This one comes up a bit deep, but it does close down the scoring error for Canada. It's really only the button now available. Yeah, and this one chance now is Canada need to take this to get into that button. Because ideally with Hammer, they don't want to just score one at the first end. Sometimes said to be a, a game for the front end players. These two skips will try to prove those people wrong. Line's good. Wait on Link. Wait's good. Line's good. Through. Wait on Link. Well, carry. Needs to curl. Close. Oh. Yep. Whoa, 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 whoa. Line looks good. It's all about the weight. Whoa. Whoa. Ah, lovely shot. You can see how all the pl all the players are so good with draw away here. Everything packed in the forefront. I think that's a testament to the uh, the work the ice makers have put in this week. Been so consistent from day one. They know exactly where to put the broom. Exactly what weight to throw. Uh, the players have got confidence. They know the ice. Yeah, shoot if he makes it, <laughs> for sure. Yeah, just slightly concerned. That yellow. If Switzerland can hit what they see of it, it will spill both reds. Cannot see much of that yellow. Enough to do the job, but uh, not an easy shot. It's maybe a third. Yep. I'm not happy with the throw, Martin Rios. Maybe put that one a bit wide. Jenny Perry thought it was a, a little bit tight to begin with, but this one will go past. Actually chips out a yellow. <laughs> Unless we just tap this to back here for now. If she plays that, then yeah. If I can, if I can do the, just get to here and bump it a little bit, then you might have this for for right. a couple. The only other option, uh, Carrie, is if I can get close to nose on as close to nose as possible on this, but I. I gotta move these a lot, and I think yeah. I don't think we're making any space. Do we 
repeal the guard? It's not terrible. I don't think it makes it it. Right now, you got no shot for two, so I like this. Okay. Yeah, so just trying to work out how they can possibly make more space in that forefoot to try and get a two at this end. Switzerland still have the same shot that they played the last time that Martin attempted. Jenny Perry still has that in wick on the yellow to cause a problem for Canada. So Canada deciding the best bet is to bring another one in, another red counter right in on top of their own, even can afford to tap theirs back a wee bit. Hard. Hard. It's like... Okay, hard, stay on it, stay on it, stay on it. Stay on it. Hard, hard, keep going, keep going, keep going. Keep going. Okay. The man can snoop, but I know from here. The man can snoop, but I So, coming up a bit short. Yeah, Eva. Switzerland do have that in wick again. Definitely can't see much of it. I think that's one of the best things, but... What is it? Out of four is too much for me. It's 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 too much for me. What would you like? A half of me. So you can see there, Switzerland can't see much of that yellow stone. But if they do hit what they can see, they will lie short. Looks like they're going to guard here on the right-hand side. I think we're only taking half a rock more ice. And I'm wondering if they're trying to guard the run back as well here. Have a bit of an overlap. This one is running a bit early. I'm happy to cross the center line here. So guards the uh, yeah. run back on the red stone. Yeah. I think you'll get some curl in this spot, Kerry. Okay. A lot of red stones in there, but not easy to get the uh, yellow going. Kerry, if you're okay, I like here. Huh? I like this ice here. Okay. Again, we just want to just tickle it. Okay. Just a tickle. Yep. Curl. Switzerland, was, I think, is speculating if they were going to play the run back, but that is not the shot for Canada. Last stone. So Rios run straight here. And I think we might see the same for Anderson. Oh, right past. So hoping to chip in another red for a score of two. That'll just be the one point. Canada will lead Switzerland one to nothing after one end of play here in Curl Aberdeen. Yeah, I knew that was too much ice. I didn't overthrow it, so I was like, eh. yeah. Yeah, for sure. I'm 
Anderson gets the second end going for Team Canada. We're starting to build like a big end for the Canadians, but uh, one really yellow good. stone. Mine's really good. Left second shot for Switzerland. Saved the end for the Swiss. Yep, yep. This is a great opening for Anderson from uh, Selkirk, Manitoba. Big curling province. Well played from Jenny Perry. They have last stone, quite happy to split it back, change the angles. You see uh, national coach of the mixed doubles program for Canada, Scott Pfeiffer, taking over after Jeff Stoughton, around the had that position for many years. And also see uh, Heather Nedowin on the coach's bench for Canada, the uh, team coach for Kerry Anderson's women's team. Felt like they wanted the female presence on the coach's bench. Might be a good dynamic to women, to men on the team. So there's no bias. <laughs> and of course, both of them bring uh, a lot of uh, championship experience into uh, this team for the Canadians. It can be a bit lonely just being the two. short gives Switzerland a chance to play a tap on their own. Lie two. Really nice from Martin Rios. Want to try and get a bit more to the inside. Bad because you'll not be able to see the whole of that yellow stone. So scrapes past the guard and does remove one yellow. But Canada have got two at the top of the forefoot. Peter Hartmann, coach for Switzerland, sitting next to Stefan Meyenberg. They're cozy inside their little window in the home end. We see the coaches sitting on opposite ends of the sheet here. I think it was meant as a, a safety a safety we'll approach and with the pandemic situation, but uh, it seems like coaches might actually like it. They get a bit more space and privacy. Yeah, and the players like it too, just going up and having a chat at the end of the end. 
Big sweep here for Martin Rios to get past the center guard. Oh, it's going to nick that guard. So that opens it up. This one's better. Okay. Yeah. Unless you like the run. I don't know. Okay. Do we uh, kill one of the red yellows? Yeah, we'll kill one. I don't we'll mind that, that either. Back one. What's that? We'll kill that back one. The other one will just jam into our red. Okay. Which is fine. It should still leave us in. Canada have got control of the forefoot with the two reds at the top. They could just play a tap back on their own red, or they could run the red back, remove the yellow from play. They will run it back, thinking the uh, yellow shot stone might just catch in the pocket of the back two stones and stay, but if they can remove one yellow and leave three red... Uh, Short stones, they'll be happy with that. They have jammed the yellow just on the red back stone. They were hoping, to, of course, to jam it on the yellow, so that one goes. But um, yeah. still three, three red stones in there. Yeah. Maybe Canada sitting two. Jenny, you must have done a log. I feel like Tadra is from Dritte. It's opened up the head, probably favoring Switzerland here. Just had to cross another inch. Yeah, they can make a double on the top two reds here. They've got three yellows in there. Canada has one red with just the one stone to play. That's a huge let off for Canada. Rios loses the shooter. Only kills one red. Even a nose hits. That is pretty good. That's a huge difference. That yeah. shot's made or, or a big not. opportunity lost there for Switzerland. Now Canada have the opportunity to force Switzerland to take a one at this end. Gush is saying if he knows it, we're probably lying three, so that would be fine. But I think, I think the call is just to try and double the, the yellows. One, two, they go. And Canada will lie three. So a four foot drop for Jenny Perry. Three Canadian counters are all back teeth, so shouldn't be too much of a problem. Last stone, second end for Switzerland to tie the game. Should be fairly straightforward here for Jenny Perry, but there's also always a, a bit more pressure when there's three opponent stones in the house. Not really sweeping this one, Martin Rios, but staying close. Should be close. It will slip beyond the tee line. Gushu will give it a few scrubs, will give it a try, but it does hang on back for Switzerland with the single point. We'll tie the game after two ends of play.
Little, it's just a little slow. 14 is 14 is pretty good. Yeah. Like I I threw a 406 split on the one that came half in the court, but there all week. And we went the whole way. Yeah. And I was 412 on the one that stopped biting the eight foot coming this way. And 40 Yeah, 402 the one that got there. But down a, a good path, I could get away with 410, 415. Oh, yeah, I know. <laughs> Jenny Perry draws for one in the second, so she'll start the third. Looking to lock this on. The uh, Canadian Stone now pre positioned, back four. The host is apologizing for being a little too eager to sweep that one. Didn't sweep a lot, but uh, that is generally what you do is just apologize if you sweep at all when it wasn't necessary. Of course, Jenny Perry could have thrown that a couple of feet lighter and given Rios a, a bit more room to, to work with. As a sweeper, you don't necessarily like just looking at a stone the whole way down until it comes to rest. It feels a bit more comfortable keeping the broom down. As we see Anderson come up quite heavy here. He's probably hoping to, to jiggle the stones a bit and maybe add it a couple of feet, but um, just a bit too much. Yeah, you heard at the, missed, uh, the break, Brad Gucci was talking to the coaches about slightly different timings right on different right. paths. I got a three eight, so I thought it should be okay. It's not a lot, it's very minimal. Time difference. Really high numbers for Martin Rios, 81% for the week. Stays partially open. Canada with last stone here would quite like to, to shuffle these yellows a bit. Could hear Gushu wanting to hit the top yellow just a bit high side. Yep. Maybe hack weight and around there. Just try to split the yellows and open up that forfeit. Yeah, they know it will jam, but just needs to try and generate some space. Pretty good result. The two yellows are both back T. Martin Rios just looking to Hit this red and roll across into the forefoot. Ah, very nice. Stays top tee. Same thing, just get to the nose. Okay. Taking a look at the other qualification game, it is Norway playing Italy. Are we scoring a single in the first end? And I do believe they might be shot stone here before the last stone for Italy. Yeah, Stephanie Constantini. Yep. Last stone. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, 
needs to curl big. Not curling, Carrie Hart. Curl it. Has to navigate whoa, past whoa, whoa. a lot of granite to get right to the button. Getting a bit heavy. It is, so it's a steal of one for Norway. A lonely red in there, but it scores. Norway lead 2 nothing after two ends. Of course, winner of that game will also play in one of the semi-finals. It's going to depend a bit on ranking. Sweden is first ranked, so they get to play the lowest ranked team com coming out of the qualification wow. games. So out of those four teams, oh, Canada would be the highest ranked team, then Norway, yeah, then Italy, welcome. then Switzerland. Nice day. If I read that correctly. So this one's looking a bit heavy. Martin Rios wanted to keep that top of the forefoot, so Canada would have to make a play on it, but it just slides deep. Brad Gush has now got the chance to get in for shot. See the green lights on the really need to curl. And the really candles. Needs to curl, Just indicating no, no, that it was no, released no, in time no, before no. the hog line. Needs to curl. Really good weight, but just didn't find the line. Yeah. Few stones been running. A tad too quick down that spot. Might be keening up. Ah, sorry, Kerry, that's terrible. Of course, you throw a lot of stones down the same path. It does oh, tend to quicken up a bit. Thought if you threw that by like a tighter path, it would have been okay. Yeah. Like you were taking edge eight. It's a really good chance for Switzerland. To maybe chip that red and roll in. Y three. I'd say if you threw what I just threw right there. Uh, if Jenny Perry can just get to the inside, roll across, it'll make it very difficult for Canada to score. Well, you're certainly going to listen when Jenny Perry calls line. And that is a great shot. Well, chip and roll and to cover the top of the button. And that does not leave a lot of room for Canada. Just wanted to roll a fraction more to block the draw in either hand. But I would still rather be in the Switzerland's position right now, lying three. They're so high demanding, Ronnie. <laughs> Perfection. Yeah, no, I think if she rolls maybe two inches more, the might not be, might not even be able to score Canada, but uh, the pin is open. I think even if you rest on the back yellow, maybe that's good enough to get second shot, last stone. Either way, for Canada, third in, and it's a tied game, facing three yellows here. Anderson, this one pulling up short, Gushu and Kerry, both working this really hard to get it there. Does it have the legs? I'm not sure if it does. And that is going to be a steal of three for Switzerland. You know, they had to play the other side of the sheet. Maybe just a bit slower. Played a lot of stones down that right-hand side. Looking at it from the home end. And then switching over. That could have been the uh, difference. And Switzerland will steal a big, big three in this qualification game. 4-1, they lead Canada.
Yeah. This is straight. Jenny Perry will start this end as well. Sweet Switzerland stealing three in the third end. That is a huge end for the Swiss. They've had a very rocky week. We weren't even sure if they would feature in the playoffs. Five wins, four losses. It was just enough to put them ahead of USA on head-to-head -head record. So they certainly haven't been at their best this week, but as we often say, after group play or after round robin, that first part of the, the championship, it's, it's a new tournament. You start again. Whatever happened yesterday doesn't matter anymore. Yeah, definitely. It's like two different competitions. The first part... It's again Olympic qualification for Beijing. And now these teams are through. It's all about medals for them. Yeah, it must be such a relief to have secured that spot in the Olympic Games. And, and now for these teams, it, they don't have to think about that anymore. It's, now it's just a becoming world champion. And of course, Canada haven't done that before. And this discipline came close two years ago, the last time you were able to host the World Championship in Stavanger. It was a Sweden-Canada final. You could have the same this year, but the Swiss will, of course, try to have a say there. Nice tap back. It's also been a very long haul for Kerry Anderson. It's her sixth event in a bubble environment. I had a bit of a disappointing world championship ending up in fifth place. It has two consecutive years. Or of course, we had a gap year without competition, but uh, two years in a row for Canada outside the top four and the uh, Women's World Championship. And they hadn't been outside the top four since 1999, so I'm sure Anderson would be very, very keen to uh, make up for that and medal here this week in Aberdeen. But of course, competition has just become so much more fierce. So many nations signing on, especially now leading up to the Olympic Games, uh, a lot of Associations putting more funding or receiving more funding to put into the teams leading up to the games. The run. Where'd you get on that? Uh, the ten spots available at the Olympic Games for mixed doubles. So we'll have 
eight nations qualified after this week. And two more will come out of the Olympic qualification event later on in the year. Canada I won on the button. Martin Mayo is just wanting to come in and half check that top red. Doesn't want to spring off it. And he just has. Brad just coming down to have a look at the angles. Yeah, I think we just try and tickle that. And yeah. Kick. I think so. Go ahead, get them. It's about a kick. Oh, that Swiss counter that rolled out into the open. A chance for Canada to use it to nick the one off the top of the one foot. Just out to the side. And a good trip, Joe, yeah. Because that red yellow plant very good now for Switzerland to use. Can get all three here. One, two, not quite. Gets the double. Yeah, good shot. That yellow's quite lonely in there now. I was hoping to catch the first yellow here a bit thicker. Maybe get a touch on the third yellow. Martin Rios will look to close down the scoring area. Well, that's pretty well played by Martin Rios. Yeah. Yeah, really nice. It's hoping not to bounce off there, but. It's not enough of a bounce that uh, makes it an easy double for Canada. Canada need to try and open things up here. I do find that the Swiss are usually quite hard on themselves. It's not 100%. They won't be happy, but that's why they are also world champions. The uh, run back, not made by Gushu, and... Uh, Really had to make contact there. Yeah, Switzerland lie one. If Switzerland half checked that top red, it'd be very difficult for Canada to score. Huh? Half checked it on the right hand side, blocking the yellows yeah. and making it difficult to use the red to raise. And it's lighter than they wanted, so just gonna guard the line now. Of 
question can you ever hit the yellow? I do think if you hit it with pretty high hard weight, you'll get both those yellows moving. Spin off the red, catch the back yellow. They're looking at the red. I think if you hit all the yellow, you can see it pretty hard weight. It's going to spring the red and catch the back yellow at the same time. Yeah, that, that's and you've got two other counters. You lose your shooter, but that's, uh, that's what I was thinking. I think the red up is a much harder the shot. The raise is always an option. What's that? The double raise would be for two. Yeah, I have. It's like edge on edge. Okay. So do you like just a firm? Yeah. So we run the red back. This is a tough one. Probably have to come very close to the guard. Last stone for Canada. Trailing Switzerland by three. Yep. Yep. Hard. Hard. This one curling. Hard. Will they be past the guard? No. And that nicks the guard. And I think that is another steal for Switzerland. Another point on the board for yellow. Jenny Perry, Martin Rios will lead Brand Gushu and Kerry Einerson. 5 1. And that is four ends played already. We said, said the game will go by quick, and we're already halfway there. It's uh, going to be an uphill struggle for the Canadians. They'll have a short break. We'll take a look at the highlights and it wasn't the first end that Canada had last stone. Hoping to uh, chip in another red for a score of two, currently lying the one. Kerry Anderson with the big weight. Just would not curl in time and goes straight past. It would just be the single point for Team Canada. And the second end. Canada lying three. Putting a bit of pressure on Jenny Perry to draw for the single. But as long as you leave the forfeit open for Jenny Perry, you'll rarely have an issue that one stops back four ties the game at one each after two and the third end switzerland really putting the pressure on canada only leaves the pin open for kerry anderson okay. having to come the other side of the sheet they hadn't played the send and you question if it was just uh, maybe that tad slower and they couldn't make up for it Comes up shy. Switzerland steals a big three. And then the fourth end. Last one for Canada. Sitting one against. Looking to run the redstone back onto the yellows. Having to sneak past the guard. But just over curling. And clicks off the guard. It leaves Switzerland stealing the one point. And they will lead 5-1 coming into halftime. 84%. As a team, the Swiss 66 for Canada, well below their average this week. And they're going to have to come up with some uh, better ideas and some better shots in the second half. If they want to turn this game around and put themselves in a the semi-final. We see Norway leading Italy 3-1 and the other qualification game. And of course, those two other games, the relegation games, the loser between Hungary and Finland and the loser between Japan and Korea will have to play the qualifying event to get back into this event next season. So all around important games this morning in Curl Aberdeen.
Thank you. Mein Stau. Ja. World Mixed Doubles Curling Championship 2021 here in Aberdeen, Scotland. It is Canada playing Switzerland in the qualification game. One of two winner will, of course, make it to the semi-finals. And we see the P on the scoreboard. That stands for P -p -p Power Play, Rona. And Canada down four. Looking to utilize this power play to, I assume, score big. Yeah, they're using it now to try and get a few on the scoreboard, tighten the score line. Jenny Perry was trying to tick the yellow into the rings, open up the guard, but, uh, a bit wide and stones are replaced. You can't remove that stone from play. The difference with the power play is the pre-positioned stone in the rings is top tee, whereas when it's on the center line, it's back four foot. And that shot missed or made makes a huge difference in the power play end. Really, when that tick shot is uh, is made, or the chop, as it's called, around Mine's these parts, Let it, work. it uh, really Let it work. does Off. impede the power play team from scoring big, I think. It's, it, re it really is a good defense. But now, that when that shot's not made, Canada can come around and sit too fully buried, and that's really setting up for a huge end. But oh, Anderson not... Finding the finish here. Yeah, it was a good weight, just didn't get the line again. You can see the frustration. Okay. It is tough to make that draw though, considering you really only play towards the forfeit all game, all week, really. And uh, to know exactly what the weight and the curl is going to be for that particular shot, not, not as easy. Of course, they should have and probably would have played a few sh shots out to the wing in pre-game practice. Out. Switzerland, not allowed to remove any stones from play yet, not even the stones in the house. Not in mixed doubles, so they'll be playing the tick shot again, actually. I think you'll see a lot of teams maybe coming into the rings here, but Switzerland will do both. Yeah, and in the pre-game practice, for the qualifying games because last stone's de already determined and, and the round robin draw shot is so important for rankings that they all Can want to draw to the center the and practice that whereas in these qualification games you get the opportunity to yeah. draw to the wings what if we free, try and freeze a little low? Freeze here? No, freeze on the yellow, just on this side. Yeah, that's yeah. okay, if it's on this side. Right, you shoot. A couple of options here. They could hit and roll. They can guard the reds on the wing. Right there. They can it's freeze. It's it's just trying to generate the biggest end possible. Well, trying to force close. an error out of so Switzerland. Oh, yep, 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 yep. 
yeah, yeah, yes. Olympic champion in Turin 2006. He's also world junior champion and of course world men's champion. Won most things, Brad Gishu. Of course, it took him 14 tries to win a Canadian championship, the, the Briar, as it's called, and finally won it at home in St. John's, which was, I was there, and it was quite fantastic. And especially since no team from Newfoundland had won the Briar since, I believe, 1976. And uh, also went on to win the world championship undefeated. First time since Kerry Burtnick in 95. So. Went on an incredible run. We'll have to do some work to pick up another title here, though. Brad Yushu, we see Martin Rios, a little fortunate, maybe, Sorry, guys. with that one. Okay. And yeah, does, does apologize, yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. yeah. He wasn't happy when he let it go. But what a result. <laughs> just taking a look. Next door, Norway, Italy. We did show you the score, but we'll show you the shot as well just looks like a lonely yellowstone in there for yeah. italy Kristen and just a nose hit <laughs> seem quite happy with this one yeah, well played empty house nose hit for one extend the lead three one after four so even though Switzerland are oh, lucky to end up corner frozen, they have they left three less. red stones on the wing here. Definitely not out of the woods yet. Gushu will chase the yellow. Could be lying four here. Again, this is a little tricky to know this spot. Finding the curl in the end here. Trying to roll in uh, ends up killing one of his own reds sitting just behind the sheet i could see what gushu was thinking it looked like it was coming but then yeah. it just didn't didn't come as much at the end from the hog line in as he anticipated but they still lie three well, i'm not sure if they'll be lying three for much long much longer rona we have martin rios Martin Rios also played a um, couple of European curling championships and men's curling for Spain, actually. He is half Spanish. Played the uh, represented Spain in 2007, 2008. Just misses the back one there. Oh, that. Huge break for Canada. If they could score a three here. That would be uh, huge for them. Yeah, I remember, he, remember I was there in Bönnsjölsvík uh, in Sweden, 2008. The Europeans, Martin Rios, really kept uh, Spain's games alive, playing a lot of doubles. Could not make it count here, though. So important yeah, here for yes. Brad to keep the shooter and try and get separation. Doesn't get the roll away. Still pretty good. That is a mighty flat double or steep slash. I doubt the double is there. Yeah, they would have to slash that red on the left-hand side across to the one at the back. As you can see, if they rolled maybe a foot, foot and a half longer, the angle becomes very, very uh, difficult for Switzerland. It would be a very thin slash or a very thin double. So this is pretty simple now. If Jenny Perry makes a double, Canada scores two. If not, very likely they'll score Jenny Perry firing at the hack here. 
Trying to catch a piece, run it onto the second red. They do, it jams, but does it spin far enough for Switzerland? It does not. So Ooh. close to being perfect. Yeah, if that curls another millimeter. Switzerland only gives up the two. So I can see Martin Rios discussing when they might want to use their power play. Catches the second red, just couldn't spin far enough. Certainly had enough firepower behind it. Yeah, it's been a well played power play end for Canada. Some struggles early for Anderson. But uh, second half now. Can draw for three. And this one looks good. All the way down onto the forfeit. A great uh, power play end for Canada. They score a big three back. Switzerland will lead five to four with power play in hand. And we'll see if they will elect to use it already in the sixth or keep it a bit longer. 5-4, yep. after five, yep. here in Aberdeen. If you get in a good path, I think what you threw last end is probably too much. Probably good, hey? I think it's max. Oh, yeah, because yeah. I was back four on its own in a little yeah. pressure path. So. Sixth end of play in this uh, qualification game, Canada, Switzerland. I'm Sander Rolvang, sitting next to Rona Howie take you through this game again I just feel like these games especially the important ones they they go by so quick and mixed doubles it is 5-4 now so Canada putting up a fight and we see Switzerland electing to to keep their power play a little bit longer hopefully wanting to keep that for the eighth end Maybe control the game coming home. Yeah, so it's I'm happy just to score here. Even if Canada score two in the seventh, and as you say, they have the power play to play eight. So they do control the scoreboard right now. But a lot can happen in three ends. A bit short there, Jenny Perry. Yeah. Now gives Canada the opportunity to get second one right round, freezing top of their own. Grand Yushu and his uh, Olympic winning team of 06 did have a highway named after them in St. John's. Yep. Team Yushu Highway. Quite the honor. Hard for mine. Gotta go. Hard. Hard. Short. Okay, freeze it, freeze it. Yep, 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 yep. 
Which, uh, which highway did you get named after you, Rona, after your Olympic gold? No highway, just a begonia plant. Taking a look at all the scores we see in the relegation game between Hungary and Finland. It's a two-point lead for the Hungarians. And the other relegation game, Japan-Korea, it is tied at three each. And uh, Norway leading Italy still three to one. They're playing the fifth end. So that's the other qualification game. And of course we have... Uh, which two teams waiting in the semi-finals, Rona? Yeah, so Sweden ranked number one and Scotland ranked two. They're no doubt watching this from afar, waiting to see who they will play. Yeah, both those teams looking very strong, of course. Sweden undefeated this week and putting up some very scary numbers. Demolished. At least half the teams. Yeah, very Felt clinical like performances way. from Sweden all week. Don't want it too deep because he's running it. Defending their title. Does that ever put pressure on a team though? Having had such a great display over the course of group play and then coming into the the business end of the competition, they're expected to do the same. Yeah, and as we said earlier, it's like two different events. You finish a round robin to do one job, and then you move into playoffs. It's the second part of the event with different goals. So Sweden, I don't doubt that they will carry on their great performance today, as they've had all week. It's, I guess it's more of a question of the, the team that will be playing them, if they can bring their A game. I think they're going to have to, whoever it is that plays Sweden later today. Because even if Switzerland here has lost four games this week, we know how well they can play when they want to. Hi here. Yep. And the motivation is obviously very high in games like this. A bit of a bit more of an open hint end here in the sixth. Yeah, good shot there from Martin Rios. Remove the guard and tick the Canadian counter. Does look like Yushu will be guarding. On the other side though. Go hard on the other side. Go hard. Go hard. Needing to cross the center line here. Hard. Hard. Urging Anderson hard. to, to carve hard. it, sweeping hard. with the grain, so to speak, to Carry the stone over the go, center go, line. Go, 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 go. That might just just be enough. <laughs> it's quite a long guard. So with the good finish, he'd come round at a tap back weight. Just tap the yellow back onto the red. I can't see much of the yellow. Guards need to be fairly close to the rings and good swinging ice to be usable. So this one's got a lot of curling to do. I don't think it will get to nose here. Just tap that yellow past the red. And that leaves a really nice yep. pocket for Canada, actually. Uh, really important to use this opportunity now because there are three yellow counters for Switzerland with the hammer. And that lonely red. So a great opportunity to put the pressure onto Switzerland. They can get right in on top here. Okay, I liked it. It's running right now. 
Yushu jumping this one. Go. Needs to get there for weight, of curl. course. Anderson not li liking the line here. So Gushu switching over. Hard. Trying to carve it in. Whoa, whoa. This looks whoa. pretty close here from uh, Kerry. <laughs> oh, look at that right on the beak of their own red. Fully frozen on the button, covering the pin. Well played, well judged. Brad was desperate to sweep that. Yeah, a little bit of panic. But it does curl in the end. And I don't think that redstone's going anywhere. Yeah, we get it over. Yeah, I think the best Switzerland can hope for is to just give up one here. Don't want to give up two and lose the lead. Last stone, sixth end, Jenny Perry. Never fun to play these shots. Or do you believe just trying to come down, tap the, the reds and cut the sc score down to one. Like you said, Rona, past the guard here. Jenny Perry and add on to the red. We'll leave one though, scoring for Canada. So they have come back with a score of three in the power play. A steal of one here. It is now a tied game. Five points each after six ends in this qualification game. I think that's pretty close, yeah. Two ends to play between Canada and Switzerland, and we have another p -p power play. It's uh, Switzerland using theirs here. We saw them save it in the previous end. Could have used it in the sixth. Now feeling it's maybe now or never in terms of... Uh, utilizing it so Switzerland gets to move the stones to the side we have that yellow stone fully buried and that is an excellent shot by Kerry Einerson yeah great shot of course Canada not wanting to play the tick shot here that would really open the door for an easy score of two for the Swiss they would probably like to Play tough and play hard for the force. Jenny Perry will follow. Trying to come down onto the face of the red stone and just wiggle it open. Wiggle it free. This one needing a lot of curl and it's not going to get it. Just a bit too much weight there, maybe. Yeah, she played that bit of running just to cause a separation between the stones. But it just held it. Didn't curl enough and uh, Canada in a good position here. They would love to force, as you say, at this end. Certainly, a, there has been a momentum change after halftime. Canada looking much stronger. Switzerland starting to falter. 
Angusha trying to come straight on top again here. Trying to hold the, the angle. Pretty good there. Very tough for Switzerland to remove those two reds without killing their own Yellowstone. And where do you go for cover? I think they just need to come in at a back ring weight and tap the stones back, give themselves something to work with. Martin Rios. Not great numbers on the hits this morning. We're hoping to make this tap back good. Just free up the back yellow. That's a pretty good shot. Yeah. Still work to do, but. Either that or guard. Guard's not terrible. He's got to play our run. Yeah. I like the guard. Not a lot of time in. Next doubles, you don't have a lot of stones to to set the end up, especially when you come off the bad start. Yeah, and that great first stone of Kerry with the half check and the behind the corner guard has really set the end up well for Canada. Higher the better here. Let it curl, curl it, curl it. Of course, the saving grace for curl Switzerland it. is that the forefoot is keep fully going, open going. and the right hand side of the keep sheet going, is more. wide open. Hard, so, hard, scoring hard. one, hard. I don't think will good, be an good, issue. Good, good, good. Good. Yeah. I just wonder if that gives cover for Switzerland to draw that guard. Yeah, it's very long. Thing is, if they run the guard in that's closer to the rings, that is a Canadian guard coming into the house. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, I guess you're right. Yeah. Yeah. Could just draw around that long guard, sit on the corner of the two reds. It'd be very hard to chase for Canada. This is a high risk shot. Could have a bigger payoff. Nice. But uh, hits still not going uh, Martin Rios' way this morning. Yes. Okay. No, they have the last one. They've paid, played their power play. Uh, they really needed to yep. get something in the rings there. Around, I do you feel like the draw is a default yeah. shot in mixed doubles? Did you pick up what the column was here, Rona? Yeah, so coming round this corner guard, either 12 foot, 8 foot, they don't want to be too short to give Switzerland any cover to come around. Yeah, it's coming down hard. Go, hard, hard, straight, 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 straight. Hard, 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 hard. And that's where it is, 12 foot. So now that guard is there for Switzerland to come around. I don't know if that's great for Canada. No. It's really a guard for Switzerland. The only thing with the guard there, Switzerland could come around just back T and Canada could follow. So it is important for Switzerland to find cover and stay top T. We would have had to get a piece of the four for sure. Yeah. Not 
not taking much ice here. Well, Rios throwing that one much wider than the broom, to be fair. So line's good. Will it stay top T? Doesn't slips back, but does lie short. Yeah, pretty good effort, yeah, I think you can get away, like, honestly, for, for Rios. Get, but, uh, get that one buried. Okay, though, Force a shot from Canada. Yeah, I still think that's the shot he should have played with his last one instead yeah, of going for the raise the floor, to try and build a head up, take advantage of the power play. Yeah, I think when you came off the bad start there, a three is really out to the window and just play for the two. And I don't think the run back was the easier way to, to, to get there. Anderson. Doesn't have to even come fully frozen here, just needs pretty good line. And shot stone somewhere in front. And, and it's going to be a real nuisance for Switzerland. The line's looking oh. good. Yeah, yeah. Just gonna get past the top red. They will. And there right down onto that yellow. And it will be Great shot. pretty much frozen. Actually taps the yellow. So Canada lies three. Why not? Why not lie three? Absolutely. And, uh, What's that? I said we lay three on it too. So. Yeah. Yep. Add the pressure, because a mistake now by Switzerland. If you get a rare four foot miss or eight foot miss even from Jenny Perry. You score three, so. And Canada played a great end here, knowing that Switzerland are playing their power play and the objective forced Switzerland to a one and they've achieved that. Yeah, it all started with the first stone as well. Anderson with that perfect corner freeze. Really made things difficult for Switzerland. And of course she ends with another great shot here. Last stone, seventh end for Switzerland, facing three Canadian counters. It's the second time Jenny Perry's had to outdraw three reds in this game. And I think again she'll come up with the goods. Right on the forfeit, no doubt. Single point for Switzerland, so they will lead this game. But only scoring the one and their power play end. So we've seen both power play ends employed which means we'll have the center guard back in place for the final end switzerland six canada five We're in Aberdeen, Scotland for the World Mixed Doubles Curling Championship 2021. Canada playing Switzerland in this qualification game. To some maybe called the quarter final, but there's just two of them, so but similar to a quarter final, uh, the winner will go into the semi-finals. And that's what we're playing for. One end left in this one. A one-point lead for Switzerland. See the pre-possession stones. Now on the center line. This is a great start from Jenny Perry. Yeah, great button drop. 
Yep. We take a look uh, next door, Italy using their power play Back in the eight. sixth end. Back Just uh, well then, uh, playing a little slower than our uh, game. Close, yeah. This last one for Three. Stefania Three. Constantini. Playing a hit in this Norwegian counter. Potential for a big score here. Oh, that's a great shot. Yellow one to red, over to the other red. <laughs> a great shot. Oh, wow. A big score of three. Really nice weight. So Italy tighten the score, now 5-4 after six ends. Great use of a power play. And I thought they were just drawing for two, but Italy. Lines that one up. That is a great shot. And uh, but Italy actually just about three minutes left to play the last two ends, so they will have to be quick on their feet. And that's why they're a little bit behind our game, where both our teams have more than three minutes left to play. That, sh that shouldn't be a factor. Of course, it's only thinking time. So as soon as you've crossed the T line with the stone. The clock stops. Curl. shot, right? Yeah. A really nice shot there from Switzerland. Can you get that today? Yeah, I think we got to try. I think we've seen three great shots already in the send. Yeah, stone positioning so crucial. It's all eight. about the angles, you were edge of the eight. what you're leaving the opposition. Maybe a hair and with that one, top of the forefoot, Canada want to try and just tap it back, change the angles. Tough to play these little taps. If you ever overthrow it, you're not going to get good, good enough chunk of the yellow. And you roll your shooter in the open, sometimes behind the tee line. So really just having to play the perfect weight and have the perfect line. And this one over curling on Brad Yushu. Just rubbed the guard and no more. Just feathered it. Timeout called by Switzerland. Just to take a look at the other scores, we see Hungary have kept their spot in the World Mixed Doubles Championship by beating Finland. And Finland will have to qualify next season. Japan leads Korea 6-3. I I think the first thought often with that shot from Gushu is maybe to play that little hit and check off that stone. But I wonder if Switzerland just wants to get the shot soon off the button here. So they're coming the other way, playing the yellow onto red. And they would lie too. And if they can keep their shooter in front as well. Really nice weight. Uh, great shot. I think that works out very well for Switzerland. Yeah, Canada. 
Three stones left in the end, and they need to score two yeah, for the win. We gotta, we'd have, we gotta move this because yeah, we still gotta move this. Killer, yeah. Timeout. So timeout for Canada. So often the timeouts they come back to back. Yeah, uh, keep. Gotta make sure we score. Short in the game here for Canada. Not looking great for that right now. Do we ever? Running it is not a bad option right now. They have to make sure of their one. I think that might be the play to be quite honest. I think we gotta run it. Uh, there's, there's, I'm not even convinced there's enough space for a rock and if we ever touch this or touch this, we're dead. Like if we touch this, we just bump that to there and we're never getting a chance to even score. I was thinking like, could we ever play like a bumper? Yeah, it yeah. is, but it's kind of behind the T line. We could always pop this one in there or a draw. And my shooter should roll off a little bit. Like, I think we're leaving enough reds in there that we're still going to give ourselves a chance, but we also give ourselves a chance to score right now. Like, can we ever hit it that it just ticks that over there? Sorry, what's that? Like, can we ever hit, like, run oh, that? Po possibly, yeah. Tick it through? Oh, I know. I think if I miss anything right now, we're in the same boat, though, Scott. Yeah. I, I think there just is, but I, I think if I ever get to this one, I think we're, we're done. And I think if I ever hit, like, a quarter of this, I think we're just bumping that frozen. Yeah. Maybe. On this here? Okay. Just through it, so just yeah. a tad bit more weight. Yeah, I just, I, I don't, I'm not convinced there's even a hole. I don't, I don't think we can touch the, the yellow. Touch the red and hope it lines up, basically. But then yeah. isn't he just going to tick this outside one and mess it up on us? Okay. Okay. Got two minutes. Yeah. Do you want the outro or do you want the run back? Your call. Um, so no real conclusion anyway. with all that discussion. Just a shot. Leave me a shot. Brad's very Best tempted to run the run back, guard right? back. Best chance of scoring a deuce is doing something here and lining yeah. it up. Let's give her a go. The run? No, let's uh, play this outro. We see about a minute and a half left for Canada. So they won't have much time, especially considering uh, how the end is playing out. Might not be so Wait, obvious oh. what to do. Clean. Yep. Whoa. Wait, Scott. Whoa. Right off. Whoa, right Talked about off. a run back quite a lot in right the off, end. Carrie. We're going to come down. Just trying to set up the angle here on top of that yellow. That's okay. That's not bad. Might leave a better angle for the run back on the next one for Gushu. Yes. Had to get to the inside there of their own red. Of course, Switzerland has a, another stone to come. But if Switzerland guard this now, there would be a problem for Canada. It looks very tempting to hit and check off the wide red. Oh, it does. <laughs> but if they ever were to nose that and leave Canada the end of. Or even just draw there. Even better. And where Brad's red is rolled to there, you can only see half the stone. So a great opportunity Hang here out. for Switzerland to weld one right in the pack. A little heavy out of hand from uh, Rios. Needs to get past. Could chip off the wide red. And 
that's what they'll do. I think if we can. Quite fortunate there. They were just going for the dead draw weight. Well, you might say that's experience to play on that side of the tolerance for Rios. Yeah, definitely didn't want to be in the tight line there. This looks very tricky for Canada right now. They don't have a shot to score, seemingly. So this run back needs to make contact. Key shot here for Brad Gushu. Run the guard. It does need to spill something. Oh, rather, going past the guard is the plan here, but that's going to catch the guard. My apologies. In the end. I think Canada really had to shuffle the stones around in the forfeit. How are they going to score? Yeah, so important there to make contact with the red. Switzerland lie three and currently no shot for Canada to remove all three. And that's a bit strange. It didn't, it hasn't felt like Canada's made any big mistakes either in the end, except for the last stone from Gushu. That's that probably an end. We're going to have to go back and look at step by step. For Jenny Perry. I guess they're guarding. Last, potentially last stone of the game for Switzerland. So the guard will block the run on that red stone. Anderson already in the hack, 45 se seconds left on the clock. Is there a quad? Just to get that yellow past the top yeah. red. You're just, just, uh, it's so tight. You got lots of time, but it needs to be really hard. Yep. Yeah. Really hard. Yeah, it looks like there might be just be slightly checked, but the angles, if they get past that top red, it might move all the yellows. Last stone, eighth end. Whoa. Big weight from Anderson. What she got here? Oh, go, 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 go. oh my! <laughs> wow! Wow! Shot. What a shot! Yeah. That is insane. <laughs> throw it as hard as you can at the brush. Wow! Oh, I result. think we all thought that game was over, and somehow Kerry Anderson <laughs> pulls a rabbit out of the hat. Awesome. That is incredible. Wasn't even convinced the shot was entirely there. But even actually touches that redstone on the way past and still makes the shot. Under pressure. If that yeah, hadn't good. caught the red, the two was potentially there as well. Wow. And we get to see one more. I don't think Switzerland can believe it. It is 6-6. <laughs> and we play one more.
We are in Aberdeen, Scotland for the World Mixed Doubles Curling Championship 2021. And as okay. any playoff game nice. yep. should be nice, Brad, full yep. of drama yep. and Hard. Uh, Hard line. Hard line. Hard. good shots. We saw a pretty incredible one from Kerry Anderson on the last one in the eighth. Essentially a quad. Opened the whole forfeit to score a single. Just uh, incredible. And it makes you ask the question, did Switzerland perhaps guard the wrong shot with their last? Yeah, potentially, because that raise was the only shot Canada had left to potentially score. Yeah, when you looked at the angles, you thought the shot was there, but still to pull it off with the uh, clock ticking, last stone of the game. Very impressive. And uh, you see a mistake from Switzerland. Jenny Perry ticks the guard. It is Switzerland with last stone here. Play the outturn freeze or the tap? Of course, the clocks are reset. Both teams will have three minutes to play this extra end. You see uh, Norway scores two in the seventh with their power play. They lead Italy 7-4 as they play the eighth end. Also, Japan will beat Korea. So Japan stays up. Korea will have to play in the qualifying event to uh, play this championship next season. Just looking to tap the red up. Freeze the yellow. A uh, really nice shot from Brad Gushu. Switzerland are now able to hit, so we'll just clear up the front. Important shot here for. Rios won't have too many chances here to open it up. Needs to make uh, these runbacks count. Uh, I think he's put this one wide. So just peeling the guard. Just the guard? Yeah. Guard will be replaced, and then Rios most likely will we'll try again. I wonder if the pin is just maybe accessible for Switzerland, as yeah, it lies. The pin draw is still there if the head stayed the same, but I'm sure you would see Canada happy to put up a few guards and then they would yep. potentially tap up again or come around. Mine's good. Yep. Yep. Uh, yep. Uh, clean. 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 Just clean. Finish, finish, yep, 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 yep. That's good. So I want you to keep that guard fairly high to make it a harder run back. Switzerland calls the timeout. They do get uh, another timeout for the extra end. And this time Switzerland will have a bit of a longer time out as the coach has walking time from home end. Very quiet for a timeout. Just waiting for the coach. Yeah. Yep. 
Eba, boss. Coach of the voice, uh, no, the voice of the coach, a bit muffled behind that uh, face mask, but I think uh, pointed at the, the guard saying run back. Yeah, ideally they'd love to take the guard and the one off the eight foot. Yeah, and if they can ever just touch the shot stone to maybe remove their own uh, yellow, the backing, it would be ideal to spill everything open. It wasn't very close with the first one. The second one, much closer. Look at that. That is... Well, well. <laughs> Completely changes the end now. I mean, that's very, very good effort. The question is, does it make it better? Of course, the shot's so not, now not frozen, but it is now... On the T-line, you can't outdraw that stone, I think. No, before there was a chance to draw the button, whereas now it would have to be m removed, even just back an inch or two. So you'll see Canada guard this. And if Martin can make a similar run back again, Keep it up there. Hard early, hard early. he's done a very good job. Uh, Okay, whoa, 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 clean it. Line's good. Clean it, line's good. Actually, you might need to curl the carry. Yep, hard, 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 come on, come on, come on, gotta get in the center line, hard. Go, need to plug the hole here. Oh, have they? I think it's good. Just enough? Yep. Is there a hole? Yeah. Didn't think it had that. So looking at the last stone between Norway and Italy, Italy having to score three. So this is Kristin Skaslin with the Norway's final stone. Yep. Oh, oh. Hey. Hey. A little bit of a panicked line call, calling off the sweeper, Magnus Nedergotten. Great double. Yeah, so that eliminates the chance of a three. Norway will win. 7-5 over Italy and put themselves through into the semi-finals. And, and Martin Rios. <laughs> Yet again. Yeah, it's kind of like the first shot was very good if he could follow up with a second, and he has. Took that one off the button. Shot's now back four. He wanted to go right there half buried. Time out for Canada. Carrie makes a good point. She 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 does have this. Yeah. I think if we come right here, that's pretty yeah. If good. we yeah half buried, I think we might even be able to get a piece of the button. Yeah. So I'm thinking like there. Uh. Edge. Yeah. Edge even ed even close. edge is close. Okay. Yep. Okay, that I was like such that. a good result for Martin Rios to get that one off the button. Because it's a different story if you're guarding one on the button to having to bring a second counter yeah, right think, uh, in. An undercurl is better than an overcurl here, Terry. Okay. So, you want to take a hair, hair more ice, and if it's not so curling, we're we going to come in half, kind of half okay. buried, full forefoot. That's going to block the out turn draw, the counterclockwise draw. So you're thinking just outside edge eight? And then yeah. okay, I like it. maybe leave the draw on the right-hand side as we see it, but then corner guard might be slightly in the way. Might have to see Switzerland play a little chip and roll. Yeah, a stone positioning of this really crucial. Last stone for Canada. It's close. For sure, this time <laughs> in this game. Really good, we thought she had thrown the last one an end ago. Easy. Whoa. That saved Canada. Four right now. Whoa. An incredible shot Kids. in the eighth. Close. Looking to follow up Whoa. with a. Sit. Another good Whoa. one here. Curl and sit, curl and sit, curl and sit. It's sit. just good shot. come too far. Yeah, it's just a foot too deep there for Canada's liking. What too heavy? I I went on it a little bit on you, Kerry. I think if I don't touch it the what? whole way, Switzerland are facing four Canadian counters. 
Although the button is open. Well, the question here now is, do you draw the cool button or you do you draw on to the backing? And I think you need to make the choice because if you ice for the draw and think you're going to use the backing, you might go right past. And if you ice for the backing but play the draw, you're cur over curling it. Well, Jenny Perry, last stone, extra end of this qualification game. And Rios is on the sweep early. Is it shy for weight? That's the question. Both of them working this one really hard to get it there. Does it have enough weight to get onto the button for the win here? I am not sure. It is curling and it's curling big and it's going to over curl. I think it is a steal. It must be. It is one for Canada. Wow, what a comeback from the Canadians. Maybe one of the best shots I've ever seen. <laughs> what drama. <laughs> Not maybe, it was one of the best shots I've ever seen in the oh, That's high praise from Brad Gushu. Oh, and this game is decided in the end just by an inch. Martin Rios knew that was light out of hand and did everything in his power to keep the line for the win. But in the end, Canada steals it. We got to go do those interviews now. And that shot from Kerry Anderson, as described by Gushu, one of the best shots he's ever seen in his life. That says a lot. Coming from him, 7-6, final score. What an unbelievable game we've had this morning from Aberdeen. That means Canada will be through to the semi-finals along with Norway. They picked up their win on Italy. And in the semi-finals, waits Sweden and Scotland. And it's to my understanding Sweden would play Norway, so we will get confirmation. Scotland then would play Canada. We'll take a look back at some of those amazing highlights of our game and also get a word in with the winning side. Fifth end, Canada using their power play. Jenny Perry so close to making the slash double to cut them down to a score of two. Well, it wouldn't spin out for the Swiss, so that leaves a draw to score three. Canada will make no mistakes. Kerry Anderson finds the forfeit, puts the three up on the board. Having trailed by five, they're now within reach another great shot by Anderson deadlocks a freeze on the button to set up for the steal Jenny Perry knows she can't score so just looking to re remove the second counter make sure it's only the single for Canada and it will be in a tied game in the seventh power play for Switzerland couldn't get anything going Jenny Perry left to draw against three once again in this game. Waits great here from Perry right on the forefoot again, but single point was not what they wanted in their power play. In the eighth, Switzerland leading by one, sitting three. It looked all but over. Kyushu telling Anderson, throw it as hard as he can, and she did. And it just curls in time to remove all the yellow stones off the button and take a single to push the game into an extra. An incredible shot. Anderson coming up just a foot too deep with her last, leaves the button open for Jenny Perry to draw for the win. Martin Rios knew. It was all shy for weight, all tight for line. They both sweep it. They sweep it all the way. They try all they can to get it there. But in the end, it just over curls by an inch. And Canada steals the game. Well, Team Canada, what a game. <laughs> a huge momentum swing in the second half of the game. 
What was your half-time chat about? Uh, just uh, stay in it and uh, just keep fighting and um, just make some shots and put some pressure on them. Uh, yeah, that steal at three kind of stung a bit. I had backing <laughs> and uh, just came up a little bit short, but I knew that we still had lots of game left. Yeah, we talked about in the fifth inning coming out and trying to get a two or three and you know, put a little bit of pressure back on them. When you have a four point lead, it, it, you feel pretty comfortable, but all of a sudden if a team comes back and gets three, even with the power play, it, uh, it puts a bit of pressure on and that was a big end for us to turn the momentum around. And Kerry, we have to talk about your last one at the eighth end. <laughs> Yeah, um, I saw it the whole entire time. I was like, hey, there's a quad here. <laughs> if I can get these rocks going, if her guard overcurls. So, uh, and it overcurled and left me it. And so I was eyeing it up. <laughs> yeah, that's, it's one of the best shots I've ever seen. Like it was, uh, you had to throw it really hard to make it and she hit it absolutely perfect. And uh, even then I wasn't certain it would roll quite far enough. And when I looked up, you know, it rolled, you know, just a foot, uh, foot more than we needed, which was awesome. I was super impressed. Well, definitely shot of the week from our side. Yeah. Many congratulations. Good luck in the semi-final. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. So we see uh, this morning's session coming to a close. That was all the games played. We had Norway play Italy in the other qualification game. They won 7-5. So it is Canada and Norway through to the semi-finals. The other two games, relegation games. Hungary will... Uh, keep their spot at the World Championship, putting Finland into the qualifying event. The same for Japan. They put Korea into the qualifying event. They'll have to qualify to get back to this championship next season. And just uh, taking a look at um, the standings and how we got there. Scotland, Canada and Italy qualified out of Group A. Sweden, Norway and Switzerland qualifying out of Group B. So, of course, Scotland and Sweden winning their respective uh, groups. They are through to the semi-finals and they now await the winners of the two qualification games we had this morning. And taking a look at the uh, playoff bracket, we will now see and get confirmation that it is Sweden to play Norway in the one semi-final. Scotland will play Canada in the other. So a couple of, ga <laughs> a couple of really exciting games left to be played here in Aberdeen. We uh, thank you so much for watching the, the broadcast. And of course, you should be returning for, for more now that we soon will play for medals. Thank you so much for watching.